Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. <clears throat> today is the first Sunday after Christmas. Uh, no confirmation or Sunday school today. Uh, same thing for next week. I will be on vacation starting tomorrow, and I will return back to the office on Wednesday the 5th, uh, going to Minnesota on Wednesday, and uh, stay a few days up there. Um, and then on the 9th of January, the second Sunday, is the baptism of Christ. We will celebrate baptism that day, as well as getting back into our routine, so confirmation and Sunday school will resume on that day. Um, Anybody have any announcements they'd like to share? I don't know. When would you like the greens taken down? I don't know how long would you have left. By usually the tradition goes is when you reach the twelfth day of Christmas, which is January sixth, Epiphany. That's when things can come down. So if they can come down after um, any time between the second of January and the ninth of January. So any time during that week, you can... You're going to have a Sunday school with confirmation of the 7th? No, on the 9th. Yeah, the 2nd is still vacation time. So can't do it then? After? After church? Yep, yeah, sure. Sure, however, however you would like to do it. <clears throat> uh, this morning, uh, Laurel is um, away. She's in Minnesota or probably on her way back, so I will be playing for some of the hymns today. Um, if you're able, please stand for our call to worship. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody, worldwide. God has come among us in a child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. You shall find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. Glory to God in the heavenly heights and peace to all on earth who please him. Let us pray. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your goodwill 
and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. An Old Testament reading from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is from Psalm 148. We'll read it responsively. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded, and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy, New Happy New Year. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. So I want to reread our scripture readings for this morning. You can follow along in your bulletin if you'd like. And what I'd like you to do is listen and see if you can spot a common thread between the two readings. And I'm going to start with the John reading first. And my translations might be a little different printed, but you'll get the gist. So from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning, and everything came into being through the Word, And without the word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. And then from Genesis, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The common thread for these two passages, for me, is the word, with a capital W, word. John writes that in the beginning was the Word. This Word, God's Word, the let there be light Word, brought forth light into a dark and chaotic world 
over dark and chaotic waters, and God saw how good the light was. All it took was the word from God to bring forth something good in the midst of a glob of dark chaos. Let there be light, and there it was. That same word from the beginning of time and space came down to us, was born as a human being to poor human parents. That word was born in a dark and chaotic world. The word was born not only to bring light to a dark, chaotic world, but not to let the darkness take over. Jesus was always that word, that capital W word, from the very beginning to the present, extending into the future. Jesus brought the word of love, forgiveness, and hope. His word, Lazarus, come forth, brought life to a man once dead. His word, this is my body, this is my blood, given and shed for you, brings forgiveness and unity. This word, I am with you to the end of time, brings hope and comfort. His word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, brings God's experience of human suffering. God's word creates And our words do as well. God's word created light in the beginning, and therefore our words are to create light. This time of year we say Merry Christmas, combined with Happy New Year. How do your words create a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year? Do your words bring light or encourage darkness? Do they reflect God's light in a weary world? As 2021 comes to a close and 2022 is about to begin, God said, let there be light. And then God said to humanity, shine that light I have given you out into the dark world. I give you my word so that you can create light and bring it to the world. Use my word to build up, not to tear down. Use my word to welcome, not to divide, but to respect, not to belittle. Use my word to bring love, not hate, to bring hope, not despair. Use my word to forgive others, just as my word has forgiven you. Remember, my word carries a lot of power. Use it wisely. But don't just use words, says our God. Don't make them empty, void, and formless. Live those words. Just as my son lived the word. Live love and respect. Live forgiveness. Live listening. Live hope and welcome. Live for the other and not just yourself. Live prayer and worship. Live light. Sounds like an impossible list of things to do. I try, but I can't do it alone. You try, but you can't do it by yourself either. St. Mark's cannot be the only congregation to do it. As part of the body of Christ, of the whole church on earth, we, along with all of humanity, can do it with the help of God's word, the light of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. For with God, nothing is impossible. My prayer for us is that the light of God's incarnate word empowers us to reflect God's light in all that we do, in what's left of 2021, for our upcoming new year, and for years to come. Amen. And if you're able, please stand for our hymn of the day, What Child Is This?
join our voices with the heavenly hosts and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church, church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation, that we live in service to you and the natural world. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds and imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any need this day, especially Vicki Achenbach. Vicki. Sue Achenbach. Sue. Rod Shinest. Rod. Virgil Vermoss. Virgil. Jolene Jessen. Jolene. Beth McAprang. Beth. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You come to us with the gift of life. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays. Brock Barney. Rock. Suzanne Hunoff. Suzanne. Madeline Schroeder. Madeline. Stacy Peterson. Stacy. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You come to us through those who have died yet live with you forever. We give thanks for all who have before us. We give thanks for all who have before us, pointing us toward your eternal love and salvation. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love, made known to us in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to share Christmas peace. I'll review how, you, how we say or how we sign Merry Christmas in American Sign Language. So it's Merry up twice and then Christmas. So out and then into your face. So we're going to do it three times. So Merry Christmas. Turn and face each other. Merry Christmas. And then for our YouTube watchers, Merry Christmas. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In these latter days, God leaned toward the earth and spoke to us by his Son, Jesus the Beloved, born of our sister Mary and the Holy Spirit, guarded by our brother Joseph with fatherly care. Jesus came among us as a helpless babe, cradled beside the beasts warmed by their breath, human as we are, in need of human love. Kings bowed down before him, bringing gifts, and emperors were troubled by his reign. This child in whom all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us, and his flesh and blood were given to us. 
in his final gift of grace. In the night in in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come now, O Lord, in the breaking of bread. As you once were born in a manger in Bethlehem, come to us again in the mangers of our hands and hearts. May your word take flesh in us, awaken us, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the whole way or never. Amen. Please be seated. This is Christ's table. It's a table of love and welcome. It's a table of fellowship with the poor and communion with the earth. So come those of you with the great faith and those of you who wish you had more. Come those of you who have tried to follow Jesus and those of you who, who have failed. Come those of you who depend on this meal for your lives and for those of you for whom it is a strange thing. This is the Word made flesh, the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born for us. Come now, for the banquet is ready.
Please stand if you are able. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. Grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you today and forever. And the congregation says, Amen. So go, tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. Thanks be to God.